So today I'm looking at the Hirsch Vineyards Pinot Noir Reserve Sonoma Coast 2016. Um, if you're watching the news or you're a wine fan, you probably know about the um, Kincaid wildfires that are currently, unfortunately, running through that area. Um, 75,000 acres right now are, are currently impacted. There's been lots of people obviously asked to uh, leave their homes and um, several buildings have been burnt down and three vineyards, uh, sorry, wineries, unfortunately, have been impacted by, by this. So I did think, you know, I did. this was due to go out on Sunday. I didn't record it. I thought perhaps it wasn't the right thing to do. Um, so I looked at other wines and I thought, in the end, no, you know, um, in this small platform, in this small way, um, I want to show my support for that area. Um, obviously, it's only two years since something very similar happened in that area as well. Um, so I wanted to showcase, any. I think it's a good thing to do, to showcase the very best of the area. So Hirsch Vineyards are a very well-known producer. And um, yeah, I'm still going to do it. We should review the wine. So um, this producer is about um, two and a half hours north of San Francisco, five miles inland from Walsh Landing. It's quite wet, wild and windy up there um, in winter and very hot and dry in summer. So we're on the kind of edges of, of great winemaking, which is what Pinot Noir loves to be anyway. Um, we might consider this to be a cool climate, Pinot Noir, even though we're in California. And so I'm looking forward to trying this. It might be a little different to the ones that I've had more recently uh, from Santa Inez. Um, the estate itself was founded in 1980, the year I was born, so I can remember it. Um, this was plant they planted... Pinot Noir and Riesling, mostly Riesling. Um, at that time, people didn't know necessarily what would grow well. Um, over time, they realized that Riesling would not, so they, they tore that up, put down more Pinot Noir and some Chardonnay. So Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are obviously the um, grapes of Burgundy. And this area, this 68-acre um, estate, has lots of small parcels inside it of um, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So it's quite, it's like a little Burgundian village in that way. Um, it's really quite fun if you go onto their website to look at all the different routes so that they have all their little um, areas written down with um, what, what you know how the grapes are grown there. So what the rootstock is, what the clone is, what the planting density is, all these sort of things. So if you are a wine geek, I would recommend going to Hirsch Vineyard's website because it is a wine geek's dream. Okay, so what can you expect from Pinot Noir from the Sonoma Coast? When you buy Pinot Noir from the Sonoma Coast, probably you're better to look for producer than anything else. I think it's such a wild and diverse area that um, trying to say all oh, this appellation, this AVA, all this is not necessarily going to make sense. Um, they are very different to um, Pinot Noir from Burgundy, so I think maybe let's do a comparison against that. So colour is not going to be any different, really. Um, the, the nose and the palate could be quite different, so the red fruits are going to be uh, maybe a bit more dense. Um, maybe you'll have a lot more uh, um, strong cranberry and um, cherry notes. And depending on where in California, you might get a, you know, a different kind of minerality. Sometimes I, I can pick up notes of iron quite strongly, depending on um, what area of California, but I don't necessarily think that's the case for Sonoma. Um, 2016, um, it's, it's very young. Um, I think this wine especially would benefit from a little bit of bottle age. But it's a halfy, so I'm going to pretend it's a 2015. Not that that makes it a lot better, really. Um, but it was half, not nearly half the price, third less. So I could feel a bit better about opening it in that way, too. So the colour. You're best to look here, I think, because you, you know I wouldn't do that if I was looking at it in a, in a proper wine tasting. You'd be, you'd be like this and down here. But, you, but here we go. When we're tilting it, I think on the video, it kind of makes sense to look there. And it's a mid ruby. So on the nose. I'm very cold where I am here, so this this glass is pretty pretty cold. But I think it's a it's a kind of moderate plus intensity on the nose. It's very it's got a real autumnal like warming spicy red fruit note, which I'm enjoying very much. Since the clocks have just gone back, so it's got um, like sweet tobacco or allspice in there as well. But it's very, very heavily cherry. There's kind of one note cherry, really, but I love it. It's like cherry liqueur, so I'm not, I'm not too sad that I'm not getting a lot other red fruits than that. So on the palate. So that really strong red cherry note is uh, really prevalent right at the start. It's a very big attack, very fruit forward. Um, medium plus body, good acidity, silky tannins, really well balanced. Great structure, um, 
and it's still going now. I think, to be honest, of the 12 wines that I've reviewed so far on this video review format, this one is by far the best. So better than way better, sorry, not way better, sorry, chocolate block, but better than the chocolate block and better than um, uh, Moussa. Yes, uh, better than that vintage of Moussa as well. So how much did it cost? Well, it's 94 points from Robert Parker. So that's a pretty high score. $79 for a full bottle from the Manhattan Wine Company and £48 from Robeson's. I think $79, 94 points, that's pretty good value. So um, cheers to Hirsch Vineyards.